Oh yeah, I'm on. Right. Good evening everybody. Welcome to the Development Committee, 23rd of November 2017. Thanks to Sonia, it's starting to warm up a bit. Um, just before we get, get going, our usual emergency evacuation announcement. Should we be required to evacuate the building, would you please leave the building via the nearest available exit of the chamber? Our assembly point will be in the public car park at the side of the civic suite. Please don't delay the evacuation to collect any belongings. Please do not return into the building until given permission to do so by, account, by council staff. Please also note that this meeting will be recorded. And if you've got a phone, please put it on silent. Thank you. Right, item one, apologies for absence. They've been received from Councillor Merrick. I'll do one and two at the same time, actually. Councillor Merrick, who's been substituted by Councillor Ward. Councillor Milne, who's been substituted by Councillor Lucas Gill. Are there any others? Okay, thank you very much. Number three, non-members attending. I can't see any. Number four, minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of October 2017. Happy for me to sign those as a correct and accurate record of that meeting. Thank you. Five declarations of interest. Yes, please. Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, um, item six, 7.1, 7 7.2 uh, being um, non pecuniary. As a ward member for the area and parish councillor. Thank you. Councillor Steps, though. Yes, thank you, Chair. Again, uh, same items as Ward Councillor and also as its County Council member for that division. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lucas Gale. Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, non pecuniary interest as a Ward Councillor. On item for six. Item six and seven. Thank you. Uh, members, there uh, is an addendum that's been circulated. Has everybody seen the addendum and had a chance to. Right, okay. Uh, we've just received it, Councillor Griffin. Can you make sure that uh, uh, at the end you've had proper time to take in all the information concerned before you come to your decision on a particular item? Thank you. So, item number six, land to the west of Oak Road and north of Horn Road, Rochford. Mr Strengths is going to take this one. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application is to the northern side of Hall Road. This uh, photograph usual, us, usefully shows the development that's in progress. By way of background, members will recall that the site was formerly green belt and was released in your allocations plan in 2014. It was subsequently granted outline planning permission for uh, 600 dwellings. That's taking the site up to the outer boundaries with Ironwell Lane and slightly further to the west. Um, and then there was two applications oh, for reserve just, matters. Hold on one sec. Councillor Newport, I think we've just been started at just about a minute. So can I just check you've seen the addendum on this one? Yeah. Right, okay. Just don't want to de uh, make sure that you've got the opportunity to take part in this. We've only just started, so you're, you're just in the nick of time. So just okay. to help members to orientate where the site is, anyone perhaps not quite familiar with it, um, as I say, the site was allocated from the Green Belt. It received outline plan of mission. Then two large chunks of reserve matters. The first one, which is largely under construction here, which was for 293 dwellings, and then later on a further remainder of the site for 307 dwellings in 2016. If we can jump to the character area plans. This plan, don't worry too much, members, about what you see underneath. The, the sole purpose of just reminding you of this is that the development itself, rather than have a monotony of, of say 600 houses looking the same, it was subject to controls by way of <coughs> definition of character areas with higher densities in the middle, um, a relationship to the spine road that goes through the site, the entrance details, and then the outer limits of the site as you, as you bled into the countryside. Just to remind members that there was a character approach to this, this development. So although the house types are common in a lot of places throughout it, their treatment and their relationship to each other are different. Now, members with a keen eye will see the plots that concern us are up here. There's a better plan to come, but you'll see that it relates to this bit here and these up here. 
Um, if we can jump to the what I've called the red and purple plots, please, Rob. Um, this plan, if we can zoom in on this centre, if that's possible, members will see that this basically is an application to uplift the overall uh, 620 by 20 units. It actually only affects that second of the reserve matters application, which usefully is shown in a more darker outline. This is the earlier phase of reserve matters, which is under construction. But if members can see, though we're, we're looking at the purple plots being the proximate indication of where the new dwellings, the new 20 dwellings are being sited, in order to fit them in, the applicant has had to re remodel the remainder of all the areas that you see red. And I'll take you through plans to show you to that. You'll see it affects what's already been granted plan of permission. They front existing roads that are already laid out. And obviously the school site is reserved and not part of this. Um, at the end there, as well as the open spaces beyond and the perimeter open spaces around the site as well as in, inside it. Um, so the bits that concern us tonight, Chairman, are those that are outlined in red. And, and basically what it does is it takes out the larger houses, there's two five-bedroom and 28 four-bedroom houses in those areas, edge <coughs> red, and it brings in four one-bedroom apartments up here, which we'll see in better detail in a moment, um, and 17 two-bedroom houses and 29 three-bedroom houses. And there's a plan to come, but it will show you that because there's 20 extra dwellings, seven of those will be affordable, which will be located up in this end, because your policy requires for that, that increase in number to have a 35% increase in affordable, um, in affordable uh, provision. If we can jump to 04, please, Rob. Uh, sorry, just before we leave that, that helps you better showing just the context of where the plots are in relation to to the development if we can jump to 04 please rob and the first slide now this one the, the applicant has usefully shown this is what was approved to this part of the scheme which was uh, seven detached houses and you'll see it's been revised to nine houses by introducing uh, a pair of semis which are two bedroom properties uh, and also putting uh, the the houses in a terrace link group so that they're they're pushed up, which gives the space, but it still maintains the spaciousness and the architecture as part of those character areas that I showed you earlier on. Um, in your report, you'll see reference to the semi-detached being on a narrow frontage, when, particularly when you're infilling in existing streets. You require a, a, a frontage of some 15 metres. These are on 13-metre frontages, but you'll see because of the car parking spaces either side, there is plenty of side space. These two dwellings here, two bedrooms, so they only require... Um, 50 square metres of garden area, but they have an adequate setting that does not compromise those characters uh, that I showed you on the big coloured um, plan and layout. If we can jump to two, please, Rob. Similarly, in this second slide, you'll see where the applicant has shown what was approved on this part of the site, which was um, three detached and a pair of semi-detached houses, and that's been revised with seven in the arrangement shown. It's now part of the character of the Spine Road, where the, the bus route would follow through, and you'll see his tree-lined avenue. Um, and the exterior walls here would be finished in yet and red and yellow light rough brick um, with weatherboarding and plain tiles as they make a transition from the other areas. Um, the detached house at plot 47, which is this one on the end, is the one that you'll see has a shortfall of three square metres. And though I'll help you with that in a moment, Hopefully members will see, at least on this plan, that that garden space is, is usable, which is officer's point in the recommendation. If we could jump to three, please, Rob. Again, it's the same format. This is what was approved in the reserve matters that council has already granted consent for. And in that revision, they've again adapted it um, to put in from what was six detached houses to two detached, two pairs of semi, and a terrace of three. So uplifting this small area by three, uh, or small in the context of the overall site, by three extra dwellings. But again, you'll see there is adequate isolation spaces and the character is not compromised. If we could jump to uh, four, please, Rob. Here we see again an area there where there was eight detached houses, and that's become a, a greater mix of dwellings. Um, this is now moving into that northern character area onto uh, as the development bleeds out towards the open space uh, on the edge of the site and onto Ironwell Lane. Um, this has become 14 houses by, again, a mix of semi-detached 
um, and and uh, there's still detached dwellings in that mix. Um, in the report, officers have uh, highlighted to members that these two plots here, they're only a metre apart. Normally, we would like to see a gap of two metres, wall to wall. But again, in this setting, around this tight courtyard here with semi-detached buildings opposite, um, in this case, officers do not see that there is any demonstrable harm by that uh, slight shortfall inside isolation spaces. If we could jump to the next one, please, Rob. In this uh, fifth uh, slide, the applicant again is up to the numbers. There was a, a detached garage on this plot that has become a dwelling through, through moving around and shuffling the sizes of the dwellings. Um, and uh, there is also um, where we have the, um, the situation where the buildings have become semi-detached, again saving on, on plot frontages. If we can see the, uh, I think it should be the last one, is it Rob? Oh yes, this one, um, the second but last. Again, the same idea. This is where the applicants have introduced the, it's a, a block of four, two up, two down flats. But you'll see these blue circles mean the affordable element. Um, and there's a plan I'm going to show you in a second which shows you the clustering. Um, but the same approach, taking out larger properties and putting smaller ones in, in the same area. And if we can see the last one, please, Rob. In this position, members will see here, there was a, a detached and a pair of semi-detached. What the applicant has done, um, because the affordable housing requirements is for smaller, particularly two-bedroom houses, they've still got three dwellings in this location, but they're smaller and they're produced in a, in a terraced format. If we could um, jump to 06, oh, that's right, the affordable housing. Members will remember from the previous applications that the affordable housing is clustered. They're in the areas where you see blue. And the sites that are before you tonight are in the red outline. And you'll see where the affordable housing provision is proposed. It joins that cluster there adjoining the school site, which isn't part of this scheme. It's still part of the overall development, but um, I think there's been lots of rumours about that these proposed extra houses are on the site of the school. And you can clearly see that they are part of remodelling what you've already approved, not on the school site because rumours saying the school isn't going to happen or whatever. The school site remains there, as hopefully members can clearly see. Now, in terms of the uh, broad density increase, members can see that 20 extra dwellings, this is the collection of the uh, sites that you've got before you, now with the landscaping details shown. Um, officers take a view that the 20 extra dwellings over the 600 and, 200, 600 and the, uh, the broad proportions of the site, etc., doesn't have a meaningful impact on the overall density of the scheme. It also provides for smaller household to meet demands that we have through our market assessment. So officers are supportive in principle of that. Members will see on the report that the regard to drainage, the lead local flood authority just require, requires some extra technical details to do with how the extra surface areas will be met within the system. The applicant has provided, as you'll see in your report, um, an assessment or an addendum to the assessment that was done. But before signing that off in its entirety, the lead flood authority have just asked for extra details which officers are content can be dealt with um, by condition. We have yesterday received now a highway view on this scheme. You'll notice that wasn't in the report before you. Um, and the highway authority have no objection to this and the layout. Members will have seen from the previous drawings that it fronts the existing layout and the car parking areas are provided to your standard. Um, it's just that you'll see in the recommendation there's an uplift to the legal agreement on certain points and the Highway Authority asks that the bus contribution be increased proportionately to do with the number of dwellings that are being increased. Now, from Table 1 of your report on page 6.23, members will see that four of the 43 plots affected are below the minimum standard sought by the council. I think the worst one is, is tw 12 square metres. And I pointed that one out to you whilst we was looking at the slides in detail. Um, the role of garden area standard primarily relates to infilling, to try and get the uh, balance right between amenity space where you're squeezing dwellings perhaps amongst existing layouts. Um, whereas in this case, it's a brand new layout. And members will recall that the uh, layout previously on this site had a few um, shortfall in spaces. I think it was half a dozen across the remaining um, spaces. Members may also recall that when we dealt with the application or one of the applications at the Christmas tree farm site, 
that issue was challenged by members and we went into an appeal and we subsequently lost that appeal where the inspector felt that whilst it was perhaps regrettable that the garden spaces weren't quite to the size, as it was part of a wider scheme and like this scheme had access to uh, nearby areas of public open space which you saw in the big layout skirt the site and also as a couple of uh, small squares in the development itself, that was good enough to, to accept the shortfall. So in, in these circumstances, Office, officers see a direct comparison to that appeal decision and on this occasion do not feel that it amounts to a defensible reason for refusal. Um, similarly on table two um, you'll see the analysis against the space standards. Now all of the house types that are used are short to a minor way. Um, some on just the storage and cupboard space, others um, on, on the gross. You'll see it's not a substantial shortfall but the point here is that those house types have already been approved in the layout, they're already being built, so it's very difficult to demonstrate a harm caused by that shortfall other than just merely for standard sake. We have the policy DM4 that's been superseded by the national standard and the shortfall, all that would do would just be trying to enforce that as a, as a rigid standard, which I'm, I'm not sure um, the government, uh, the inspectorate would support us. Those house types um, already precedented in the layouts that have been approved. Now, in terms of overall infrastructure, I make the point earlier about the, um, the legal agreement. If you see it, paragraph 3.3 to the officer report, the outline permission is on page uh, 6.3. The outline permission was subject to a number of, of terms for the legal agreement. Now, a lot of these have been provided, like the roundabout onto Hall Road, other junction improvements at uh, Sutton Road and, and the Amber Lynn junctions there. Um, so physical things that have already been provided, this, this small uplift cannot, cannot meet because that's already been done. But what officers and the applicants feel that where the uh, numbers are in, are in question, such as the, the bus um, subsidy, education places, um, things like that, the national health contributions that were just money into a broader pot to go into those services, it's right and proper that this scheme, which is a, a standalone full application, um, should contribute, like the outline before it, to that uplift. Um, and therefore, Chairman, uh, the recommendation reflects that. Um, before I get to that, just on the addenda, members will see that um, there's a clarification to paragraph 5.2 of the officer report, hopefully better setting out for members the situation with land supply. And also comments from South End Borough Council um, who, who point out to members naturally that uh, the education contributions is a matter for Essex County Council. So the recommendation, Chairman, is approval subject to the heads of terms for the proposed legal agreement that's set out in the recommendation and to those conditions set out in the report. Thank you. Uh, we have a speaker on this one, uh, Mr Michael Smith. Five minutes if needed. Touch the button to turn your mic on. Oh. Thank you, Chair. And on behalf of Bellway Homes, thank you for the opportunity to address the committee this evening. Mr. Tranks has already described the proposed scheme in great detail, therefore, I don't intend to repeat what he's already said. Instead, I'd just like to emphasise that the proposal is intended to address the change in demand for new homes and does not seek to dilute the quality of the approved scheme. Feedback from the sales teams at Bellway Homes and Ashbury Homes is that potential customers have shown greater interest than was anticipated for the two and three bedroom houses, whereas demand for the four bedroom houses has been limited. Rearranging the approved layout in small areas of the site has allowed us to take out some larger properties and replace them with smaller homes for private sale and a mixture of houses and apartments as affordable housing. The developers are expecting that the provision of smaller houses will better match the demand, speeding up the rate of sales, construction and delivery of the new homes. The outline plan permission sought to ensure that the whole development appears as a single and coherent scheme, but also allowed individual streets and spaces to create a sense of place and to define the character of each neighbourhood. The proposed changes maintain the character for the areas in which they are located, and each replan has been designed in accordance with the existing design brief and public realm design strategy. It is intended that the uplift to 20 new homes will be a continuation of the approved scheme, and that when construction works are complete, it will not be possible to see where the changes have been made. The revised scheme has been designed to avoid additional impacts wherever possible and the change to the mix of accommodation means that the scheme for 620 dwellings includes just three more bedrooms than the approved layout for 600 homes. 
There is also a small increase in the total floor area, but it is balanced by the small reduction in the number of habitable rooms. Technical issues have also been taken into account, with no changes needed to the approved road layout and the total amount of hard servicing left broadly unchanged, which means that the approved sustainable drainage system does not need to be revised. In addition, the off-site highway works have already been constructed, as Mr Drank said, with capacity to accommodate 20 more homes, and the financial contributions secured as planning obligations will be increased on a proportional basis. It's important to note that the proposed uplift does not require any alterations to the strategies for the delivery of the school site, funding of primary and secondary schools, subsidy for the bus service that will run through the site, and provision of health care within the town. The provision of affordable housing is increased to match the creation of the extra homes for private sale, in line with the mix sought by the Council's housing team, and maintaining the level of provision at 35% of the total number of new homes. To conclude, the proposed changes are intended to address the current mismatch between supply and demand for new homes at the site, and care has been taken to ensure that the high quality scheme is not diluted by swapping larger houses for smaller properties. The character of the site-wide development will not be altered and the scheme has been designed to avoid negative impacts and will be accompanied by an increase in the planning obligations that have already been secured. As such, I trust you will find the proposed replan to be acceptable and that you will concur with the case officer recommendation and resolve to approve the application. Okay. Okay, members. I'm, I'm suspecting that the discussions around this one were well drawn out and tested quite some time ago. Councillor Steptoe. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of questions, if I may. With regards to the uh, terrace properties, what is the and where is the allocation for the uh, centre buildings for the bin stores? And with regards to the um, additional properties that will be for um, social housing or the seven properties, Will Rochford District Council uh, have the uh, nomination rights? And really a curiosity, on the addendum, uh, it comments on South End Borough Council commenting on the school from the school development manager. I don't quite understand why he would be making a comment from South End. Children are mobile these days. Chairman, the, the um, issue from South End Borough Council largely came out of the negotiations behind the scenes going on with the legal agreement about signatories to the agreement because South End were signatories to the original outline because some of those highway works I mentioned are in South End Borough because of the impact of the scheme on the road network which doesn't recognise local authority boundaries. The, the impact of traffic is where it is. Um, we're hopefully finding a refuse strategy. I don't know if, if Rob can zoom in on that. Um, but the, the applicants have thought that. If we could, I don't know if we can get some, to some terrace units. Perhaps this one where, where you see they're linked terraced. Um, the idea is the bins are stored. Um, I don't know if you can get down to the corner, Rob. That's it, that one there. Members might be able to see it better than me. But hopefully they'll see the bins are stored in the garden. And then there's collection points. Whoops. Um, street side. And I think they go out through that way. So that middle one goes out through that door or that uh, path. Um, I can't quite see that one. There must be a way somewhere, a gate there probably. Um, but it's my understanding and having seen the plans in, in detail rather than with my neck turned, that it does comply. The, the um, application was uh, shown to the council's uh, team and they didn't, they, well, they didn't respond to the, the reply. So I assume they have not got uh, strong objections to it. Um, but that typically that's the arrangement. I mean, the, the, we've got a plan of this for all the plots, um, but hopefully that satisfies members' question um, on there. Now, in terms of nomination rights, um, that is correct. The, there is a, the element of affordable housing, the 35%, that is with a housing provider that the council has first choice um, from our lists to nominate people to that. There are rumours around of other authorities and agencies buying houses on the open market, causing rumours that other people have, have bought, and they're not from this district, but that is a matter between the applicant who they choose to sell their houses to. But I can confirm to members that the, the blue ones that you saw on the affordable housing plan, the 35% of the what is now the 620, um, they would be uh, under the, the partner would have nomination rights from this council. Come back. Chair, I'm going to come back. I'm still not clear about the, the bin storage down straight. Look at the... Uh, that's shallow. 
Uh, with regards to the uh, bin storage, I'm still not clear. Um, taking the, the two centre properties there, I assume that little sort of hatched area at the back is for bin store, is that what you <coughs> say it's bin store? How would they come that there? How would they come out through the next door neighbour's property, or is there an arch alleyway or something down through the property? Chairman, Chairman, they would come through, the, follow the, the dotted line, they would go through the garage, down their driving, and then out to the collection <laughs> points which are shown in blue there. Okay. okay, thank you. Right, members. Go on. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the, uh, the answer to that question and, uh, and, <coughs> and the drawing up there um, indicates uh, an, a curious... Um, question as to are these garages extra wide to accommodate the, the transportation of the bins to pass through them when there's a parked vehicle in there? I think Chairman the standard doesn't account for those eventualities I mean what, what we do um, if we have to move bins or any lawn mowers out the garden into the front or whatever we, we normally move our cars or we move things around I can tell you that the garages are to your preferred standard the three meters wide by the uh, seven meters deep so you know you could perhaps park it over if you didn't want to take the car out but whether you get a bin passed that's another matter but the whole idea is that these are, are relatively secure because of the built frontages and then access is possible through the garage link to, to street side once a week for, for the collections chairman Final one. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> so um, there's no other alternative access to the rear garden areas on those particular properties, mm -hmm. apart from through the garage, for, um, considering for safety aspects. Chairman, I'm not, not sure I understand the point about the safety, but the this is one arrangement. There are other arrangements with, um, I don't know if we can see the affordable housing block but you'll see that those gardens have an alleyway so I think the applicant has, has thought about this and there's, there's one type of solution that they've thought of and there are others I, I know there is somewhere in those those uh, 43 plots there are some with back alleyways but I'd probably have to pour over the plans to, to pick them out to you um, I don't know if we can see some can we go up to the other end near the school site Rob there might be some there if we can zoom in on this part Uh, to come, come down, come down a bit, and across. <coughs> I know I've seen alleyways somewhere, Chairman, but I can't memorise which plots they were. But generally, hopefully, members will see the collection points are curbside, and they're convenient to the houses, which I think is is the ambition broadly. Just not, not try get caught up in too much small detail remembering that everything that we're seeing there in terms of style of house is already approved elsewhere in the plot it's a wider thing Councillor Newport Thank you Chairman um, how is the uh, as, as we've got more houses how's the additional um, visitors parking catered for in the scheme Chairman, the highways were very particular with this scheme because of its town centre location and the proximity to the train station, they did not favour visitor provision to be provided. What they anticipated is if you provide all the laybys on the street, that they will be blocked by commuters. And then what they would have to get into is residence parking only permit schemes, um, controls and things like this. And they said, let's, let's plan that out. It's near the Rochford Town Centre. So some plots, they, they have perhaps a, an extra space within the plot, but there isn't 100% visitor provision throughout the estate because they did not want the road to become a car park for commuters. Very specific answer. Let's go on. Yeah, come back on that. Um, I think Councillor Stepto mentioned terraced housing. So, where, Sorry, where was the parking allocation for terraced housing? In front. It's in front of them. I mean, ho hopefully if we can zoom in on these, you'll, you'll see a lot of these terraces are sort of like detached link formats almost, but you'll see garages, and then you'll see the parking space in front of them. 
Um, I'm not aware of any shortfall on the plots for the residents themselves. Uh, and they are provided, as I said, at your preferred size. So they're, they're bigger than, uh, than what's gone on before, other than in the new schemes. Final question, Councillor Hockway. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I noticed in the report that um, <coughs> it mentioned about uh, adjustments to the um, um, money, uh, S106 money ag agreements because of the in increase in numbers. Um, but it, uh, it doesn't give any actual um, amounts. So is it possible you could actually uh, give us uh, in pounds and pence, please? Thank you. No. I, I deliberately avoided that, Chairman, because the amounts uh, have, have changed, yeah. and I wanted to express that it was 26 hundredths of whatever the amount was final to the other agreements. So I think, just as a guide, that the um, national health contribution, and I'm, I'm looking for the applicant to nod, I think it's 383,000 the national health, yes. So it would be whatever 26 hundredths of is of 383,000 that would go to the NHS, by way of an example. And there's similar contributions to the yeah. uh, Education Authority. Fortunate. Take that amount, divide it by 600, then 20 of those go towards the Education Authority. And there is also a bus subsidy that's per dwelling. So that cash amount divided by 600, 20 of them added to the figure. Um, okay. So we will work out those those amounts. It's index linked, so that as time progresses and until they get the triggers and the implementations, then the money would go up as an amount because it's obviously proportional um, to the increase in, in price index, etc. Hopefully that helps, Jim. Yeah, all right. Well, members, there's a recommendation for um, approval printed on 6.36, going on for a few pages. Those members in favour of the approval, please indicate. Those against? Thank you. That item is carried. I think we might be having a bit of an IT issue by the sound of it brewing. Right, members. Um, an unfortunate up computer update is requiring the system to reboot, which is probably about five minutes worth. So I shall call you, uh, adjourn and call you back at exactly ten past, please. Sorry about that. This application relates to the King's Head public house in the centre of Rochford. Um, the building is located within the town centre of Rochford and there's a frontage looking towards the market square. The building is Grade 2 listed and there is also a tandem application for consideration tonight for a listed building consent. The building has been empty for approximately 18 months to two years. Members may recall a previous application in August for an application for 12 bed sits and one small shop unit which was refused on the grounds that the proposed loss of the ground floor commercial premises, the public house, within this important town centre location would have an adverse impact on the commercial vitality of Rochford Town Centre. The tandem application for listed building consent was approved by members. 
Members may also recall an application by the same developer at 22 South Street, which was approved in February to convert vacant offices into 12 bedsits. This was also a listed building. The residential use of that building has now commenced. This proposal mostly involves internal conversion works to subdivide the existing rooms. Externally, the alterations are not considered significant, with no alterations to the front and limited alterations to the rear. The front part of the ground floor would be converted into three shop units which would utilise the existing two entrances to the building. One of these entrances would also provide access for upper floor bedsits. The rear part of the building would contain four bedsits. The shop units would have floor spaces of 16.8 metres squared, 19 metres squared and 20.52 metres squared. The two largest units could be altered to provide one unit if required. The Council's economic development team considered the inclusion of these commercial units would have a positive impact on the vitality of the Rochford Town Centre, having objected to the previous application. A new access would be provided to the rear and a doorway would be formed into bedsit 4 through the enlargement of an existing window opening. Within the courtyard, a door would also be formed into bedsit 3. The first floor would be converted into seven bedsits. There would be minor external alterations to the rear corner, providing for a fire escape access with stairs and a door opening to bed set 11, through the enlargement of an existing window opening. All bed sits would include an ensuite shower room, allowing for independent living. The bed sits would vary in size between 11.88 m2 and 23.31 m2. Officers considered that the proposal would be in accordance with national and local planning policy, and that the inclusion of three shop units overcomes the previous reason for refusal. The recommendation to members is for approval. That's lovely. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so the Parish Council has a number of concerns regarding this application. Um, we have concerns over the number and size of bedsits in light of the three retail units being added, or the, 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 the additional two, and only one bedsit lost. Um, has the quality of the living area in these bedsits now been reduced, and is this not overdevelopment? Over um, we have concerns over the number and size of retail units, the feasibility of them being let in the current climate seen in Rochford Square, and question whether a single large unit uh, might entice a business that could serve Rochford's demographic during both daytime and evenings. Uh, we have concerns over the current structure of the building, especially the top story. Um, we would need or want um, cast iron guarantees that this cannot represent a safety risk, or better, that the structure has been substantially improved. Um, Grenfell has shown when it comes to people's safety, the bare minimum is not enough. Um, regarding the proposed development itself, there seem to be aspects of some alterations in internal partition walls that do not appear to be in keeping with this being a listed building. Uh, we observe that there has um, seemingly been a precedent already set on refusal of change of commercial properties um, to residential in the town square um, and along West Street in recent applications. Um, we have a couple of specific questions regarding this application. Um, what are the arrangements for bin storage and waste management? And what is, it, what is the expected impact on the town centre for car parking of the bedsits, visitors of those residents and the retail units? And finally, we would have liked to have seen further information on the following two areas. Um, we would like to see a safety report on the impact of this change of use in the area before further discussions are made. And we would like to see a feasibility report on the loss of this commercial property in the town should the smaller retail units be unsuccessfully let before further decisions are made. Thank you, Thank Chair. You. Mr. Walker, thanks, is the agent. Mr. 
push the button. That's yeah. it. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, the King's Head Public House was purchased by my client through the, a commercial agent acting for the owners, Shepherd Neem, who have a large number of public houses in the south of England. The pub closed in September 2015 and has been empty ever since. Shepherd Neem, being a very experienced pub chain, regretfully found that the pub use of King's Head was no longer viable as a public house and business, and I understand had been suffering as a business for a period of time before its closure. The building fabric is deteriorating. Sorry, I've jumped here. Public houses and business, and I understand, had been... So, oh, I've lost my line here, sorry there. Sorry, the building fabric is deteriorating and has been broken into broken into twice and I'm a, a, of that I am aware of. The King's Head was Grade 2 listed in 1959. The internal of the building has had a lot of internal changes and fitting out within the original building. Also, extensive structural repair work carried out within the second floor loft area which cannot be reused. The proposal is to refurbish and fit out the existing building, including alterations to provide three self-contained small shop units to the front of the building facing out onto the Market Square, West Street, together with 11 bed, bed sets. The, first, the front facade of the building will not change, retaining the various mouldings around doors, windows, together with the timber sash windows, the existing two doorways being retained. The cellars will be retained in their current form. No works planned in these areas. Access to the residential accommodation <coughs> will be from West Street, front of the building, and from Back Lane. The rear access has been rebuilt and improved and would provide an area for refuse bins and cycle storage. The building, if converted to commercial use and residential accommodations, provide the use it was originally built for. The shop units will be suitable for small retailers and ideal for new start-up businesses, shops, uh, uh, businesses. Shop units one and two could be joined to improve and provide one larger unit. There is no specific use for each shop at present. The shops would have a positive impact in the town centre. It is understood that there is a real need for start-up businesses. The council's local development plan <coughs> seeks to protect and increase retail focus on the district town centres. The 11 multi-occupied occupancy flats are located to the rear of the ground floor and to the first floor. The previous, as previously stated, access to the flats will be from West Street and from Back Lane. The rear access provided a new fire escape, refuse bin storage for the flats and cycle storage. There is no parking being provided and therefore no traffic congestion. Public transport links local to the site are, are good. <coughs> the, the, this providing a, a small affordable accommodation. Listed building approval was previously um, granted following consultations with the council and the Essex County Council Conservation Officer. The building's works will be carried out to the building regulation standards and taking into account fire detection and com compartmentation and escape. The building currently falls short of the current fire regulation standards and therefore works will improve and meet the current fire detection escape and protection for commercial and residential use. Just a minute the, to go. Yet the building as it stands could be subject to vandalism and arson. That's it, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next speaker is Mr Pawley. No Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Lawrence Pawley. I'm here to represent some of the many local residents who are concerned about this proposed development, as evidenced by the negative responses both to this application and the refused application earlier this year. I want to touch on three points. The impact of the proposal on the commercial viability of the town centre, 
the suitability of the development for any future tenants, and the impact on the quality of life for local residents. On the first point, the committee will be aware that a similar proposal for this site was rejected earlier this year on the grounds it would damage the vitality of the town centre, contrary to policy three of the town centre action plan. Uh, the planning officer has, has argued that the revised proposal, which makes provision for three shop units instead of one, overcomes this concern. I do not agree with this assessment. The revised proposal still represents a significant loss of commercial space, with a large proportion of the ground floor, formerly part of the King's Head pub, converted to four bedsit units. This both represents a detrimental impact on the viability of the centre and does not provide an alternative use likely to contribute to the overall offer of the area. As such, it continues to contravene policy three of the Town Centre Action Plan. I note the Economic Development Office argument that, that the proposed shop units could provide beneficial space to startups. I don't disagree with the principle, but then it's surely appropriate to retain the entire ground floor for commercial use, allowing for a genuine hub for small businesses in a prominent historic location. This would be much more in keeping with the Council's vision for the Town Centre, building on its heritage and seeking to attract small retailers such as arts and crafts specialists. By contrast, the current proposal, as set out in the objection by David Cottis, would set an alarming precedent for the hollowing out of the town centre, making it harder to refuse similar applications for future vacant units such as the Barker's Bank building currently. These long-term effects could be hugely damaging for the town. There are even issues with the three proposed shop units, which appear to lack direct street access and share hallways with other shop units or residential entrances. This does not appear likely to be attractive to future retail tenants. Moving to the level of amenity provided to the future residents of the bedsits, I draw the committee's attention to policy DM35 of the Local Development Framework Development Management Plan. It states that the upper floors of shops and commercial premises in town centres can be used for residential purposes. However, it states permission will be granted where appropriate to ensure that accommodation is self-contained and that such accommodation provides a satisfactory standard of residential convenience and amenity. Turning to the plans, it appears that bed sits five and six on the first floor are not self-contained, sharing a bathroom access by a common hallway. In addition, the plans do not appear to include any laundry or utility facilities, in contrast to the proposal from the same applicant, which was granted in relation to 22 South Street. There will clearly be space in the building to deal with these issues, or all that would likely require a reduction in the number of rent attracting bedrooms. Therefore, I believe the proposal as it stands contravenes policy DM35, and I'd ask the committee to lay down a marker that Rochford, particularly in such a prominent location, can and should aim higher than providing these minimal living conditions. Finally, on the impact on local residents. I'm very aware of the pressures on local councils to provide housing units, including by increasing density in, in town centre areas. However, I ask you to recall that a number of developments of flats and bedsits have either been completed or are in progress in the immediate vicinity. These include the HMO at 22 South Street, the conversion of the old delivery office on East Street, the conversion of a shop unit on North Street and proposed new flats on South Street. This pattern of development will inevitably lead to pressures on infrastructure and I'm concerned there seems to be no attempt to address the cumulative impact. I echo the concerns of residents who have raised these issues in their objections and I'd welcome, for example, a chance to hear from local NHS providers and schools. There are also legitimate concerns about potential issues that can come with increased HMO density in an area, including in relation to fear of crime. Here I draw the committee's attention to Essex Police's comment on the application earlier for an HMO at 22 South Street. They noted that the National Planning Policy Framework, paragraph 69, seeks to promote a residential environment in which a fear of crime does not undermine quality of life or community cohesion. They noted the potential adverse consequences associated with HMOs, and they requested that the council gave consideration towards refusing that development, which didn't happen. While I've not commented on this proposal, I see no reason why the same reasoning would not apply here, and I believe their views should be sought. It's already eminently clear in any case from consultation responses that the development would lead to increased fear of crime in the town centre, causing distress to residents and further undermining the vitality and attractiveness of the area. About 30 seconds. No problem I'm wrapping up. In summary, I believe the proposal is wholly inappropriate and unacceptable from a policy perspective. It would detract from the commercial viability of the town centre. It offers a poor standard of amenity to potential residents. It would intensify pressures on local services and risk causing detriment to the existing population. As such, I ask that the application be refused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the step toe. Yes, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> thank you, Chair. Um, I've got some questions really around the commercial aspects of the property. 
With regards to the three units, has a feasibility study been done to see what their potential um, rentable value is in terms of being able to um, rent them out? On the drawing there, the two shops on the um, left of the drawing there, if a tenant wanted to a larger premises, would that be possible to make that into one? And I have big concerns about the the third commercial unit there, uh, because that access through there is also access to uh, properties, I'm not sure if it's on the first floor or the second floor. If there was a business going in there and you've got people just wandering in and out there, the security on that property would be perhaps questionable. What arrangements have been put in place to actually um, stop and mitigate any uh, issues around that? Thank you, Chair. Councillor Williams. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, as Councillor Steptoe points out, I have serious mm. concerns regarding the viability of these um, commercial units. Um, I know that we need, desperately, we, we, we need more and more mm. emergency accommodation and houses of multiple occupancy. I'm not sure that this is the right place. I'm <coughs> not sure that this has been thought, thought, thought through enough. Uh, and uh, I do have serious concerns regarding this. HMSOs generally have a very a transient, um, na in nature they're transient, the, the people that are living in them. And, and I'm concerned that, that Rochford itself will not be getting a, a, a building a nice community for the Rochford Square and, and, and to, to go t to the future with this. And yeah, thank you. And I do have these concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to take those couple of questions on the feasibility of the units and the security aspect? Yeah, well, we haven't had a feasibility study for the rental values for it. Um, shop units one and two, which are the larger two units, um, they've got partition walls between them which can be removed to create a larger shop unit if required. Um, in order to save the frontage of the existing building the existing frontage is unchanged so the existing entrance to the building is unchanged but there is a requirement to access the upper floor flats um, officers don't consider there'll be an extreme there's going to be sufficient conflict between users of the big places upstairs and the occupants of the shop to have any cause for concern yeah, thank you councillor mrs hoy Um, yeah, um, I have a bit of um, a concern about parking. My concern is there's no parking spaces, so I could see the people that stay there would use the parking spaces where people are going to shop in the shop. So that's my one concern, is about the parking. And I do think that there's too many, there's going to be too many bed seats there as well. <coughs> okay. Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Chair. Um, could I ask how many vacant um, commercial premises of this sort there are in Rochford Town Centre? Because my concern is that um, if we end up oversupplying this, rather than have an empty pub, we'll just have a load of empty office space. Thanks. Councillor Mountain. Thank you, Chairman. I've just been trying to, for some reason, I have no uh, internet access on my iPad at the moment, but um, the, the last speaker made reference to policy, I believe it was DM34. Um, is that correct? So, and, and I just want clarification over that regarding the, um, the bed sits upstairs in the communal bathroom yeah. aspect. Thank okay. you. We'll come back to that. Uh, Councillor Ward. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I'm, I'm a, a wee bit amazed with regard to um, the shops that are going in there and why it was never considered viable that you could still have those bedsits, but you could still actually retain a going public house within that same area. Um, and I'm very disappointed that this alternative um, has not been taken forward <coughs> by Shepherd Neem. And um, mm. I'm also concerned uh, with regard to the number of vacant 
shop premises in Rochford. Um, uh, and it kind of disappoints me to see more shop premises coming on when existing shop premises are not being completed. Thank okay. you. Councillor Hockway. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, you know, I'm very concerned in relation to the fact that there is no provision uh, for any uh, car parking. Um, doesn't seem to be uh, any provision for that whatsoever. And, and uh, bearing in mind the number of um, uh, dwellings or bed sits within within this being 11, it's quite a considerable number with no provision. Um, we are we assuming that no none of these people who are likely to occupy this will have any vehicles at all? I, th I think I, I just must mention this is a town centre location with significant amounts of public parking available close by and a railway station well served by bus routes. We've exercised this argument on a number of occasions uh, around Rayleigh and Rochford and we've clearly had it demonstrated that providing parking in town centre locations is not required. Um, Councillor Steptoe, you wanted to come back. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think the uh, question when I asked about the uh, feasibility of the units wasn't on the value or what they could be rented for, was what the potential that they could be rented out. No. My follow-up question to that is, if it is this committee is a mind to pass the application um, and the units can't be rented out, does the applicant have to come back to us to do anything further with those particular units before they could be converted into other flats or whatever. A change of use application. Yeah, would I be think required. it would have to be, yeah. but I just want a clarification. Can we come back on those other answers around uh, vacant premises and the, the DM policy, please? Uh, we don't have a number of number of vacant units of Rockford Town Centre at the moment, but I do believe there are a few vacant units. In terms of the parking arrangements, um, the standard for a public house is one space per five square metres of floor space. For a building of this size, if it was to remain as a public house, members would require a lot of parking space for this. The number of spaces for residential use of the property is much less than what we require for a public house. The customers who will go to a public house driving a car to the site or parking in the district would be Result, would result in more traffic movements and parking in the area than the residential use of the site. Um, in terms of policy DM35, uh, the first floor um, will have two, two um, separate entrances. Could we just One. get the first floor on the screen for Sorry. clarity, please? Thank you. There was an entrance from Back Lane in the rear left-hand corner of the fire exit to Bedford 11, and also that provides for a fire exit um, egress from the first floor as well. The rest of it can be um, accessed through the front, through by the existing shop units or by the proposed shop units, and these will be retained as independent access. There was the other question about the shared facility. Bathroom was it was mentioned? Um, yeah, the on the first floor there's two bedrooms or two bedsits which will share a bathroom. Bedsits number five and bedsit number six. Okay, Councillor Mountain, that was your point in particular. Is, is it correct, as as we heard um, referenced earlier, that? that contravenes the, po the policy. Do you want to feed that? If, if I may. Um, policy DM35 uh, deals with situations when we find commercial shops that used to have what they call the living over the shop. Shopkeeper used to live upstairs. So in order to get to the upstairs flat, if they become separate entities, not in the same ownership, it requires an independent access. So, so in, in dealing with uh, applications for upstairs flats or accommodation, the idea was that it should have an independent access, that the, the dwellers shouldn't have to walk through the shop or the hairdressers or whatever it is in order to go up upstairs to where they live. 
Now this scheme achieves that. It's got an entrance um, which one of the shops leads off, but it's also got an entrance at the back. So, so the, the, the residential dwellers in the bedsits would not have to walk through the shop premises to get to where they live. Yeah, I'd like to come back again. So thank you, that, that, that's not in question. It, it was the communal um, yeah. Yeah, facilities. Sure. Sure. Um, as far as um, sort of bedsit accommodation compared to um, self-contained units are concerned, they're different sort of underuse class and the way they're monitored. So bedsits can have shared facilities, whereas self-contained flats don't. So in this case, it's HMO and, and a shared facility here, which means there could be shared bathrooms in that. Situation. So there is the level of compliance because of the description. That members, uh, some on ease, however, um, there is a recommendation for approval printed on page 7.15 with some, uh, with the relevant conditions. Those members in favour of the approval, please indicate. Those against. Right. That item is not approved. Therefore, I come back to uh, Councillor Steptoe. Thank you, Chair. Um, I whether this can be sent back to the applicant on a deferred basis to go away and have a closer look at this, uh, I don't know whether that's still possible. I, I, I need uh, a motion to be moved. At the moment, the item is not approved. It has to be something. Okay. Uh, I'm unhappy with the um, commercial aspect of the property. I don't think enough feasibility study has been carried out in terms of looking at uh, whether it is actually um, viable to be actually be rented out. And I think it's overdevelopment on the site. That would be my proposal. Councillor Mountain. Chairman, thank you. I think it, it's clear um, that the majority of, of members of, the count, uh, of this committee are not in favour of approving it as it stands. I think that um, there would have to be consideration over any grounds for refusal, but I would um, I would consider moving for uh, deferment on the understanding mm -hmm. that uh, the applicant the applicant would uh, consult with ward members because clearly there is something that is not satisfying members of this committee, um, and if it's possible, I would like to defer. Uh, move for deferment so the applicant can um, consult on the understanding that can, the applicant will consult with ward members on, on a suitable way forward. Yeah. Councillor Stapteau, just before. Thank you, Chair. Uh, with regards to Councillor Mountain's suggestion or motion there, uh, would be happy to accept that. I think it needs to be looked at f right. in a far greater detail. Um, I've just been informed, incidentally, that there are six other properties yeah. in a, almost adjacent to there that need to be right. taken into consideration. Look, looked at in greater detail does not give the clarity that's necessary. We, we need precision here, so I'll, I'll come back to Councillor Mountain for a motion for deferral. A, with a some clear a motion for deferment uh, on, on the we, but before you move ahead if, I, if we could just hear the advice could you just knock your microphone Sorry. off for a sec <laughs> chairman if I may um, <coughs> yes th I think there needs to be some clear guidance uh, on the grounds given for a deferment and, and what the applicant could um, return with uh, if there is to be a deferment yeah, you have to, happy to, to move down. Okay. You're off. Yeah. You're on. There you go. Uh, I, I would I'd move for deferment on, on the grounds of concerns of overdevelopment. Hang on. Yeah. Um, inappropriate 
uh, usage of retail in in the town um, sorry over uh, yeah over development and inappropriate usage of retail outlets in in the uh, location okay we you 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 do realize that on page uh, I point 16 on 7.14 our own economic development officer has chosen to support this so I just wonder so I've got to push you on this for, for to be fair to the well to my, the applicant my understanding is this does not meet the area action plan okay thank you and So we've got not meeting the area action plan with the overdevelopment. Just a, a little bit more clarity on that one, given that obviously we are actively seeking elsewhere within the district to provide um, accommodation of all classes. I, um, it, it's a, yeah. The, the word here, I think, is appropriate accommodation. Appropriate. Thank you. And if I can just push you a, a little bit further on the the approach towards retail or housing at those bot on the on that ground floor. Well, I, I would um, I would hope to get some feedback here from officers, if I may. My, my understanding is that it, it's inappropriate because um, of the amount of. It, it, it upsets the, the the street scene to have unoccupied um, retail outlets, where premises where there are unoccupied retail premises currently. Okay. Is, is thanks. Sure, thanks. Thank you. If I may, um, to be clear, the pub is what yeah. we call an A4 use. It's not retail. So what you're dealing with is the change of use of a building that is not in retail use. It's in commercial use. I get that, but it's not in retail use. So you, you can't wrestle with the idea of a loss of retail units that, that you've not permitted them as retail units yet so they haven't had a chance to be retail and see how that goes okay now uh, the, the point was raised earlier on about not enough feasibility and I don't know if this is weaving into the, to, to the what's been moved but are our officers being asked to ask what the feasibility is of the shop units proposed because they they don't exist yet the applicant has come forward offering three small units to implement that scheme and test the market and it might be if it was implemented and they weren't occupied yes I can see what's coming that they that weren't viable but the applicant is saying give it give it a chance or are officers being asked as to what the feasibility of the pub staying open um, if, if members could help nice. us with that chairman I'd be grateful you just knock your mic off yeah Thank you, Chairman. I, I, my understanding is, is it's the feasibility of um, well, whether it is appropriate if it if it's required in this location because there are vacant units retail. It's not about the change of use. It's the fact that is it is it required because um, they may end up sitting empty and unoccupied as we we currently have. But, but I, I would just like to, may I just ask you also at this point? I've, I've said I've said quite a lot here. Mm -hmm. in terms of the, the grounds that um, I, I would say why I, I couldn't vote in favour of this. Um, and I'd quite like to open it to the floor, if I may, to see if anyone else can, um, any other members, because I've, I've moved now to yeah, say, yeah, yes, I, yes. and I would like other members maybe to yeah. address this. And, we'll, and we'll just have to clarity as to what the other members are talking to. That, that was all. Right, OK. Right, I come back to Council Steptoe now. Yes, thank you, Chair. Really what I was looking for with, from the applicant is that it's not difficult to talk to local commercial estate agents and various people to find out what the, uh, the call for that type of uh, unit is within that town centre location. Um, I don't think it's a difficult thing to have that sort of information um, to, to be brought forward to us. Okay. Councillor Williams. Thank you, Chairman. Rochford is in a very delicate situation at the moment. To my knowledge, there are at least six vacant um, 
commercial units in, in Rochford and very, very close. And I know of two more that will very shortly be closing. So if it's a question of change of use, I don't think we need any more commercial units. Thank you. Yes. Okay. M members, um, I didn't have noticed anyone seconding Councillor Mountain at this moment in time. That's come from Councillor Steptoe. Okay. Um, the, uh, the only other note of caution to, to you is, is that economic viability is not necessarily a reason for refusal at this point. However, you're choosing to put the motion to defer at this point. I think the applicant has clearly heard the nature of the discussion and, and anticipated your concerns. Um, so there is a motion for deferment at this point. They won't get that. There, the, there's the. If I just sort of pray to you, <coughs> Councillor Mountain, your reasons for deferment um, is that you would like some further evidence that retail is appropriate in that location. Although you do understand that's not necessarily appropriate for a reason for refusal, and the the overdevelopment or the appropriateness of the intensity of that development. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the question in relation to not meeting the action plan, the action plan. Right. Okay. It's just deferment. Yeah. Okay. Those members in favour of deferment at this stage, please indicate. Those against? That item is now deferred. Item 7.2 is the same application, it's the listed building consent. I think, in, in reality, I'll move from the chair that this item is deferred to meet and um, run in conjunction with the previous application. The members happy to support that? Will you please indicate? Okay, thank you. Okay, a little bit cumbersome, sorry for the break in the middle. The meeting closed.